Great. Hey, well, let's start just talking about loons. Uh, I'm going to start here really quickly. Um, I work for an organization called Maine Audubon. We are a nonprofit organization that focuses on protecting wildlife and wildlife habitat all across Maine. Uh, we've been around since 1843, if you can believe it. We are one of the oldest, we are the oldest wildlife organization in the state. Uh, and we do a lot of cool stuff. We uh, teach kids about wildlife in Maine. We have scientists who work for us who go and monitor populations of things to see how they're doing. And then we have advocates that, that try to pass laws and things that protect nature. So we're a great organization and it's great to be here. But we're not talking about any of that. We're talking about this. Holy moly. Loons are the most, if they're not the most beautiful bird, that they're, they're one of the most beautiful birds. And we can make a list later. But man, oh man, this is a loon in breeding plumage. And they're just so sharp. They have that iridescent color on the, on the feathers and that red eye. They have that really intricate black and white like necklace uh, and, and plumage. They are beautiful birds. In Maine, we, there are five different species of loons that live in North America and only one breeds here in Maine. And that's this guy, the common loon. It's called the common loon. There's not much very common about it, but that's what it's called. Um, and these are important birds. They are beloved birds and important birds. I'll, I'll talk about how beloved they are very quickly. Um, people love loons, right? And they're sort of an important part of our identity and our economy. If you drive through a lot, of, you know, anywhere in Maine that has sort of lakes and ponds, loons are everywhere. People love watching their loons on their lakes. Um, there, these are just like a little sample of all the signs that you can see if you drive around uh, 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 real estate places and and uh, stores and stuff. Here's a here's a brewery in St. George that uses a loon. Here's a here's a driving range. I don't know what loons have to do with golf really. Um, and please don't hit golf balls at loons ever. But but you know people like loons and, and have them on the side. So they're an important bird not because it's their just because they're wonderful creatures, but because you know humans really love them. But I'm going to spend the day talking about loons themselves, and I'm going to talk you through sort of a, a year in the life of a loon in Maine. Um, first of all, loons are big birds. They are big old birds. Um, they have an uh, a wingspan of about 46 inches, so nearly four feet, and they're 32, you know, about three feet long. Um, they weigh between nine and 15 pounds, which is really heavy for a bird. Um, to put that in perspective, bald eagles are only about nine pounds. So loons are heavier than bald eagles. Um, and they're heavy for a reason. Um, they are um, specially evolved to be heavy and to have other adaptations that allow them to do one thing really, really, really well and that is swim underwater to catch fish. Loons are awesome at being little fish hunting submarines. Um, here is a skeleton of a loon and I can talk to you a little bit about you know, how they've evolved to be so good underwater. Um, let's start by looking at their feet. You see they have those big old feet and they are positioned right at the back of their body. So unlike, say, a sparrow that has, or, or most birds that have their feet right sort of underneath their body, a loon's legs have evolved to be right at the back end, like a ship's propeller. So they can you, use those webbed feet underwater to move around and swim really quickly and be really agile, which helps them catch fish. They also, looking at the front of them, have this long neck. It's like a big spear underwater. They're like a they're like a they're like a spear gun underwater that just shoots around after fish. The one thing that you can't really tell from this image is that these bones are solid. Most birds have hollow bones, and that helps them fly. So you know, flying is hard, and so you need to be as lightweight as possible to help you fly. And so most birds have bones that are like honeycombed. They have air pockets in them, which makes them lighter. But a, a loon doesn't want to be lighter because it wants to be underwater. If it was really light and buoyant, it would sort of bob up and down in the water and not be able to chase fish as well. So loons have evolved to have solid, 
heavy bones, which allow them to stay underwater and chase fish. Mm -hmm. um, so that contributes to them being, being so heavy. Um, but I will say there are a number of trade-offs that being so heavy and a loon's special body it, that require. So they require some trade-offs. One, one of them is that they are not very good at flying. Um, loons um, are so heavy, they need a lot of room to be able to take off. If you've ever seen a loon take off from a lake or a pond, um, you know that they sort of, um, they, they like start flapping furiously and they start beating their, their, like running their legs and they kick. It takes about a quarter of a mile for a loon to be able to get up on a speed to get up in the air. You know, most birds can just sort of jump in the air and start flying, but loons need to you know, need a big runway. Um, here's a picture <coughs> of a loon um, flying over, you know, running up to open water. It's, um, it's a little bit dangerous because a loon needs a lot of open water. And, and as we'll talk about in a little bit, um, loons come to fresh water to have their babies in the summer. And that's great, but they need to make sure that they and their babies are off of the fresh water in the winter time before it freezes over. Because if they don't have this quarter mile of open water, then they could get frozen in place. And that's not what they want. So they're not very good flyers. Once they get in the air, they're pretty good. They're not really acrobatic like a, you know, a falcon or something, but they can fly fast up to 90 miles an hour, if you believe that, and they get cruising. And loons, um, here's where they live. And so when we talk about um, winter season and summer season, this is how it works. And so in the, on this map, the blue is where they spend their summers. So this is when they go to lakes and ponds to have a nest, lay eggs, and raise babies. Um, but like I said, in the wintertime, they can't stay on that fresh water because it becomes ice. And so they got to get out of there and find some open water. And what that means for loons is they go to the ocean, right? Because the ocean never freezes over. Um, they can stay there all year round. And so what loons do over the course of their summer is they, or the course of their year, is they move between the open ocean and the frozen, or well, the, the unfrozen freshwater. Um, this is about how they do it. Because they're not really great flyers, they don't, they're not going, they only go as far as they need to. And so this is kind of cool because in Maine, what that, what that usually means is that the, the loons that spend their summers on the lakes in Maine are spending their winters in the Gulf of Maine. So if you have a favorite loon, if you have a family that you watch or loons that you see at the lake somewhere, um, they're probably not very far in the wintertime. They probably just go out to, you know, somewhere in the Gulf of Maine to spend their, their winters. This map shows the paths of some GPS tagged loons that were, um, were tagged in, you know, you can see up here in Maine and, and some other places in New England. And you can see that most all of those birds that were tagged in Maine went to the Gulf in the winter. So that could be Bar Harbor or as there is. Um, that could be other parts of the lakes region up here. So um, uh, they're not going very far. And probably, speaking of Bar Harbor and uh, Mount Desert Island, you know, there are loons that breed on Jordan Pond and some of those other lakes there. They're probably just popping right over to the bay to spend their winters. Why, why spend all that energy flying if you can just hop right over to the ocean? So pretty cool. Um, the other thing I'll say about the ocean is that um, it takes loons about four years to get old enough to start to have babies. And so for those early three or four years, they don't go to fresh water. They just hang out on the ocean all year round. And so even in the summer, it's actually pretty easy to see common loons uh, on the ocean in bays and things. And so Ezra, keep an eye out uh, anywhere on Mount Desert right now off the coast or uh, on the ponds mm -hmm. and, that, and that goes for anybody uh, on the ocean um all right so let's talk about so for the loons who are four years and up and they're ready to start having babies let's talk about how that goes what happens first is that the males in about late april will go back to freshwater so they'll leave the ocean and they'll start to find a territory and the competition is pretty fierce because to get the best territories, to have the most fish, to have the best places to nest, um, 
loons will fight over that. So male loons will actually battle each other to try to get the best area to, to lay their eggs. Um, those fights can be pretty dramatic, um, but that's what happens when they're trying to get the best territory. Um, this is a bit of a, a, a gambit for them because they need to leave the ocean early enough so they can get a prime territory, but they don't want to leave so early that there's still ice on the ponds because then they could be in danger. And so um, the timing of when loons get to the, the freshwater is, is a bit tricky, but they go. All right, I'm going to play some sounds. I should have tested this, but hopefully, um, let me see if these works because the loons, the, the sounds of loons is one of their, uh, you know, most iconic things, right? Everybody loves the sound of loons. So um, loons make a number of different calls throughout the year and knowing what the different sounds mean can help you understand what's going on. Um, the first sound is called the yodel. And this is something that male loons give to try to advertise themselves to potential mates. And so they get a territory and then they say, hey, ladies, come on, check out my territory. Let's have a nest over here. And they do this yodel to do that. And I'm going to hopefully play this and let me know if you can hear this, okay? Yeah. yeah. That's the yodel. And that's also often accompanied by a special dance. You can see this picture of this loon here doing what is called the penguin dance. This is another thing that male loons do to show off to potential mates to show how strong they are. And it makes sense if it looks kind of weird, but it makes sense if you think about it, because um, what they're doing here is they're, they are putting their whole bodies out of the water and running along the top of the water. Um, it takes a lot of strength. If you've ever been in a pool and tried to tread water, imagine treading water so hard that your, your whole body is out and just your feet are kicking. That is how strong you have to be to be able to do this. And so that's how loons show off how strong they are. It looks pretty crazy, but that's how they do it. I should say too, that this penguin dance is also given if a loon feels threatened sometimes. And so this happens a lot if boats get too close or people get too close or predators. And so if you're in a boat and you see a loon doing this nearby, that's a sign that says, please back away and give me some space. All right, so um, now another call that they give. So, once loons advertise, then they try to pair up. They try to uh, uh, get into pairs and start to build a nest and lay some eggs. Another call they give is called the tremolo call. It sounds like a laugh. That call, uh, that's called just, that's a, a pair of loons talking to each other, basically. Um, that also may be where the, the term, you know, loony, Comes from if you've heard people say you know he's loony because that sounds like a laugh ha <laughs> like a like a loony person laugh so um, that may be where that call comes that name comes from we don't really know all right so loons pair up this is hopefully in like May or so and they start to think about building a nest um, loons don't necessarily mate for life but they mate for about seven years on average. Um, and the female is there with the male that has the best territory. And so if another male comes along and, and takes the territory, the female will typically stay with the new guy and, uh, and go that way. But on, it's about seven years on average. Loons generally return to the, their, the same area every year, and that goes for babies too. So if you have baby loons on a lake nearby and you watch them grow up, um, you know, male and female loons look alike and all loons look the same. So you can't tell them apart. You can't tell necessarily which ones are the babies. But generally, the baby loons try to come back to the same lake or a nearby lake every year. And so if you do see new loons on the year, that may be ones that you've seen in previous years that are now grown up. All right. So now we're talking about nests. So remember I said that... Uh, loons gave up a couple things in order to be heavy, in order to be good swimmers underwater. Mm -hmm. uh, they gave up the ability to fly really easily. They also they gave up the ability to walk really well. 
So loons put their legs, right, they evolve to have their legs on the back of their bodies. That means it's really hard for them to walk. They have to sort of like balance their whole body up on their hind legs and try to walk around. What that means is that in, in one thing that means is that they don't, when they lay the, when they make a nest, they don't leave the water very far. So they basically only shuffle up as far as they can go to, to build their nest, um, which means they're close to the water's edge. So sometimes it's a nest right off the water line like this. Sometimes it's, um, you know, in a little marshy area like this. Um, but it's always very close to shore. They have um, sort of very awkward leg walking. And this, this may be where the other uh, term loon came from, is that they sort of have this funny walk. Um, uh, but they sort of uh, shamble up onto shore and start to build their nest right on the shore. Um, both the males and the females take turns sitting on the eggs. Um, uh, not all birds do that, but both male and female loons do. Generally, the female loons get the night shift, which is a little harder because they have to, there are more predators out at night, skunks and, and things that are looking to eat eggs. And also they have to stay up all day because they spend the days feeding and in uh, the nights on the eggs, um, but they do take shifts. Loons lay generally one to three eggs, um, usually two about a day apart. And we're talking generally between May 15th and June 15th. And so that is today, June 15th is today. And so this is the time where if you're a loon, you gotta, you gotta get going and hopefully get those eggs in the nest right now. Um, also, if you were one of the loons that laid eggs in May, your eggs are about to, are hatching pretty soon. So I actually just heard from some of my colleagues in Maine Audubon that we're seeing some of the first loon chicks out of the nests and uh, swimming around. Because oh, it takes about a month for loon eggs to hatch. Renee, do you have a question? No, I was just saying that's sweet. I was thinking about Allison saying she's, she's seen the babies. And so hopefully she'll see more soon. Do you have yeah. nesting ones, Allison, this um, year? Yeah, I haven't noticed if there was any. I don't know where they nest. It's really funny, but it's out on Lake George. I don't know if you know Canaan, Maine area. Sure. Yeah. Um, but anyways, then, yeah, I've seen them in the past years and usually just two, like you said, and yep. swimming up on mom's <laughs> or dad's back. I don't know who's back. Right. It's cool. It's fun to watch. And now to think that in, you know, I saw those babies the year prior. So two years ago, roughly now. Yeah. So it's just crazy to think in five more years, they might be coming back for the same yeah. leg. And it's hard to tell them really apart, but that's kind of cool. Yep. Very cool. So between any time between now and the next couple of weeks, start to look out for those babies. Well, yeah, let's stop for a minute for questions. Darian, do you have a question? Oh, awesome. Great. I do have a question. My question is, um, if loons can swim, how long can they hold their breath for? Good question. Um, it's not too, too long, generally. They hold it for uh, about three minutes or so. Um, loons, and I'll talk about it in a second, but they use their eyes to see. Um, to sp so what they do is they sit at the surface, they put their head in the water and open their eyes, and they look for some, some fish swimming down below. And then when they see one, they go after it. And they're so fast and they're so such good swimmers that they generally catch them pretty quickly. And then they come bobbing back up to the surface. So typically animals that spend a lot of time underwater are ones that have to go search for their prey. Um, but loons see their prey before they go in and then they breathe and go down after it. Good question. Allison? Uh, my quick question was on, you said that their bones are solid. Are they the only kind of bird out there that have solid bones like that? Yeah, they're not the only one. Um, yeah, birds yeah. that spend time on land, like um, ostriches and yep. emus have solid bones. Also some of the other um, birds that spend most of their time on the water or diving do. Um, yeah. Loons yeah. are like, among the heaviest. That's crazy, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Paula, did you have a question? Yeah, I did. How do they protect themselves and their babies from predators? Great question. They use that sharp beak of theirs. Um, one, there's a really cool story. One of the major predators of baby loons is actually bald eagles. And um, there was a, ba a dead bald eagle found a couple years ago in Maine that had a perfect dagger mark right in its heart. 
And what that was, scientists think, was a, an adult loon defending itself, defending its babies and itself maybe against this bald eagle attack. Wow. Went, Grr, just jammed its right in. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I've talked to scientists who handle loons and loons are, are, are dangerous. You don't want to be, because um, they, if they're unhappy with you handling them, they can use that, their beak to, to, to stab you. So um, yeah, that beak is how they defend themselves. Any other questions before I keep going? I can't see everybody's picture. Um, so if you have a question, just jump on in. Okay. So I think Sunny had a question, right? Yeah, go ahead. Sunny. I am. Um, does the Audubon have a, um, uh, like a live nest cam kind of thing mm. that you can check in on them, see how they're doing? Good question. We don't. That's a great idea. We don't, but the, I'm sure there are some out there. Um, I, I'm sure if you search loon nest cam, somebody will could, because it's an awesome idea and because it wouldn't be too hard to do, but we don't, unfortunately. All right, I'm gonna keep cruising. Sounds good. And we'll have more questions at the end. All right, so where are we? Uh, yeah, um, loo, they're, they're laying their eggs now. Some of the first babies are hatching right now too. Um, loons on the nest. So I, I mentioned earlier that that loons do that penguin dance when they're when they feel threatened. Um, this is another thing they do when they feel threatened. This posture here is a loon on its nest, and it's got a sort of head stuck out right there. That is a loon also saying, "You're too close to me." Um, that's a posture like the loon's about to jump off the nest and and leave the eggs uncovered, which is not what you want to have happen. And so again, if you're out there in a boat and you see a loon on the nest doing this, this is saying, "Please." Back off, uh, you're too close. All right, eggs are hatching. So my notes here say that eggs hatch generally between June 15th and July 15th. Today is June 15th. So the first eggs are about hatching right now. Um, uh, loons can only raise one set of chicks per year, um, but if a nest fails for any reason, they can, they can try to re-nest as late as August and still try to get the birds able to, uh, to leave the lake. That's really what happens. As soon as the eggs hatch, the adult loons are, have one goal and that's to get the, the baby loons to a point where they can fly so that they can leave the lake before it freezes over in the fall. So that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get these chicks old enough and look at these feisty little devils. Um, they are, feisty and active right out of the gate. Um, they uh, are playful and uh, aggressive with each other. Um, these are some uh, baby chicks uh, sort of annoying each other, some siblings. Um, it looks like one of this, they're just playing around, but I've heard that this uh, chick with his head in the water is just trying to drown out the sounds of his annoying brother or sister there. I'm sure we've all been there at one point. Um, but as loons start, baby loons start swimming basically as soon as they're born. They are, they weigh about the, the, a stick of butter and they are little fluff balls bobbing around. Um, it's actually kind of a dangerous life as a baby loon. Um, they are, uh, like I said, um, they are, uh, they have a lot of predators and that includes things like bald eagles from above. It also includes like big fish from below. And so um, one thing that baby loons do, like Allison mentioned, to try to stay safe is they just ride on the back of their parents. Uh, it's a great place to, to ride out the, the danger until they get big enough to fend for themselves. All right, a couple more calls here. Once baby loons are, are uh, around and families are together, there's another call called the hoot call, which is what baby loons give just to check in with each other. This is just saying like, hey, you're okay? Everybody good? You okay? Everybody all right over there? That's what this sounds like, ready? Just a little hoot, um, just to say what's up or making sure they're, they're checking in on each other. Another call called the whale call is uh, checking in with, is families of loons checking in with each other down the lake. So on, mo on many lakes, there are multiple pairs of loons or multiple groups of loons. And so every night they like to check in on each other, say, hey, are you, everybody still good down there? Uh, everybody still good up the lake? Here's what that call sounds like. And this one is a, is a really evocative one. This is one that you hear a lot at, uh, at you know, dusk on a lake and people really sort of love and associate with, with 
the being at the lake in the summertime. Everybody heard that call before? It's a nice one. Yeah, it's so beautiful. Yeah. All right. Like I said, loons are visual predators. Um, this is what a loon looks like when he's sort of hunting for food. He's, uh, he or she will sit at the surface, poke their head underwater, and look around. Um, this sort of underlines the, the importance of clean water to loons because they need to be able to see where the fish are. So um, this is the stomach of a loon. It's kind of gross, but this is what it looks like when they eat a big fish. Loons need a lot of food. Um, they eat about um, two pounds of fish per day. Uh, and what that means is that a family of four will eat about 535 pounds of fish over the breeding season. Oh my God. 535, that's a lot. Um, that's about 18 acres per bird and about 160 acres of water for a family of four. That's a lot of fish. Um, Daring, do you have a question? I do have a question. Do you know exactly why the moon's eyes are actually red? Great question. I don't know why. Um, I don't know if it's just a um, um, one of the things that makes loons pretty. And so a lot of like bird coloration and loon coloration is just to show how attractive they are to the, to the opposite sex. And so the red eye might be part of that. I don't know if the eye has any special sort of like vision properties, but that's a really good question. I should look into that. Um, fish, loons will take whatever fish they can get. Um, they will take sometimes fish that are sort of a normal size like this or this, I think these are perch. Sometimes they'll take huge fish. Look at this guy trying to choke this loon, this fish down. Um, and you know, loons don't have hands. They don't have knives and forks. And so when they wanna eat a fish of whatever size, they just have to put their head back and chug that thing down. Um, sometimes loons will sort of work very hard to get the loon to slide down. They'll always do it head first uh, which makes makes it so their the fish's fins don't get caught on the way down. You can see them doing it here. And they sort of like jerk their body around to try to get the fish to slide down. You can see this guy too. He may be looking like he bit off a little more than you can chew right here, but he's almost got the thing down. And he's really, you can see that splash behind him. He's kicking to sort of help the, loon, the, the fish um, get down. Similarly, a baby loon, you know, parents will feed the babies for the first bunch of weeks of their lives. That could include, you know, little insects and, and arthropods in the water and also little fish, sometimes of a nice sort of snack size. Also sometimes fish that might be a little, uh, a little more to swallow. This little baby looks kind of overwhelmed with the fish that this, their parent gave them here. But um, throughout the summer, the chicks get bigger. Uh, they, get, they get bigger. And they're growing. You can see one of the things that happens like here is that some of their brown downy feathers will molt off and they'll start to get more adult feathers there as they grow up. They're also testing their flight feathers out. So like I said, it's really important for loons, loons to be able to learn how to fly and be strong enough to fly so they can leave the lake in the winter time, uh, in the fall before the winter comes. They loons keep getting bigger. You can see this one is getting longer and bigger. This is a, a loon in August, about two months old. It's, that's molting feathers on the face and is now you know almost as long as its parent. Continuing to molt. This loon has molted a bunch of its down feathers. You can see some of the white feathers coming in. The juveniles have a, have a white colored beak here. You can see some of these um, juvenile feathers, flight feathers come, starting to come in on the back that are sort of have this pale edging to them. Yeah, Darian? I wanted to know how long does it take for them to actually go on, off on their own? Yeah, once, the, once it, the season comes, they're off on their own. So uh, once the parent raises them throughout the, the summer, by the time fall comes, they're off on their own. 
and they don't stick together once they leave the lakes. The, the, what happens a lot of time is that um, there'll be these packs of youngsters that'll hang out on the ocean together. So sort of groups of young loons will, will hang out together, but the parents are like, well, that was fun. It's good luck. Bye-bye. Um, here's a parent with a, a sort of a teenager loon, you know, not ready to leave the house, but, but still pretty grown up. You can see all the down feathers is gone. And it's just adult feathers uh, on the back there. This is a bird that is a, a young loon that is almost ready to fly south for the winter. You can see it's sort of spotty and, and uh, got the different plumage going on. And then this is what a loon looks like in the wintertime. So loons um, don't have that adult, uh, that pretty black and white plumage in the wintertime. Um, it takes a lot of sort of effort and energy to grow that intricate feathers. And they're not trying to impress their mates anymore, right? They're just sort of riding out the winter. And so they do that with a much uh, easier plumage and sort of this brown and white. Um, and this is what a loon looks like um, throughout the winter. And so if you are down in Bar Harbor or any on any coastline and you're looking for loons in the winter, they look like this. They don't look like the black and white one. Um, they can look like some other birds too, like grebes or cormorants. But the way to tell it's a loon is that they, they ride a little higher out of the water. They have that big old blocky head. You can see they have that like sort of bump on their forehead there. Um, other birds don't have that. And they have this big sharp pointy bill. So that's what loons look like. So I just wanna quickly wrap up by talking about some of the work that Maine Audubon does to protect loons. Um, so in the early 1980s, Maine Audubon said to ourselves, we said, everybody loves loons in Maine, but we don't know how they're doing. Uh, we don't know if loon populations are rising or falling or what some of the threats to loons are. Um, so what can we do to figure that out? So one thing we started was something called the, um, the loon count. So what we've organized is um, every uh, year on the third Saturday in July, we have thousands of volunteers, 1300 volunteers across Maine, get in their boats and ride out on their local pond or lake and count all the loons that they see, all the loons, all the baby loons, and let us know, report all that, all those numbers back to us. And so then every year we can sort of get a snapshot of loon numbers. Are they going up or down? Um, this is not Joe Biden. It looks like Joe Biden. Um, we do have a lot of volunteers, but not Joe Biden. This is just some <laughs> other, some other guy. <laughs> um, you can't really see on this, on this map, but um, here in blue, the light blue color, those are just some of the lakes and ponds that we have volunteers out uh, uh, for our loon counts. 687 different bodies of water in Maine. We have folks out counting all the loons, so it's a lot. Um, and it's important because there are lots of threats to loons. Um, there are lots of things that can make life hard for loons. Um, one of them, like I said, uh, loons have to nest very close to shore. And so what that means is that their nests are susceptible to being washed out by waves. That can happen from severe storms. That can happen from boats going too fast near shore. So we work with a lot of boaters and lake associations to try to ensure that nests are identified and people slow down when they're nearby, have no wake zones are called near shore. Um, loons can also be affected by um, lead poisoning. So if lead fishing tackle falls off a fishing line and a loon gets it in its, its body, it can get lead poisoning. That for a long time was one of the leading causes of um, loon mortality. Um, uh, but we've, we are working uh, in the legislature to ban lead fishing gear and that's working pretty well. Um, loons have predators uh, like uh, skunks and minks and snapping turtles and, and crows and bald eagles. Um, people often get too close to loons and scare them off the nest. So there's a lot of potential threats out there. Um, and so how are we doing? We've done this loon count for 35 years with all the threats. How is the loon population doing in Maine? Drum roll, please. It's doing good. It's doing really good. The loon population is almost doubled in the time that we've been counting the loons, uh, in large part to our, uh, to our efforts to keep water clean, to keep uh, people from uh, boating too fast near loon, loon nests to ban lead tackle from the waters and other measures to protect loons. So it's working and we're gonna all gonna have loons on the lakes nearby. Hey. hey. Awesome. 
Um, so I'm going to stop it there and see if there's any additional questions um, from anyone or anyone wants to talk about loons they've seen or has cool loon stories. Allison? Um, mine was just on the, uh, I can't remember what it's called, when they tread up on top of water, the males do to attract the females. Do only males do that or can females do that to like show like they're you're too close to them i think only males do that it's a real sort of territorial thing mm -hmm. um and uh so they they do that when you're too close to their territory and they want to show yeah. you like right. you better back off i'm pretty strong uh get the heck out of here and don't uh, they have a call when they're in threat too yeah well? that um that uh which one the the uh well, and I, I know because I've listened yodel. to the loons like once and I went and told the park ranger, or well, it's not really a park ranger, but I told them like, hey, this boat's out there like messing with this loon. And he uh, was like really ugly, like Matt, like you could hear it across right. the lake. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's pretty, you don't need to be a scientist to understand when a loon is stressed out or mad. Uh -huh. They will make it very clear. Um, you know, and I'll say too, a lot of loons, um, uh let people come close or we'll swim you know they'll be just feeding yeah, and doing their yeah. thing and we'll pop up right next to people so being yeah. close to a loon isn't necessarily uh, a bad thing but right. if a loon is showing signs that it that it doesn't want you this close then um then you should back up yeah i've been swimming and they popped up like not very far away from me i'm like holy smokes buddy pretty amazing <laughs> huh they're so yeah. beautiful up close daring did you have a question or am i just not seeing that I thought you were raising your hand for a second. No, I didn't. No, okay. I didn't. <laughs> okay. No, I didn't have a question. No. Okay. Nick, I have a, I have a question. I don't know if you mentioned sure. this, and I'm sorry if you did. Um, they're uh, do, do they mate for life? Or are they mating with no? Yeah. Yeah, not for life. Um, they mate for on average about seven years. And it's really dependent on the territory. So a, a female loon is all about getting the best place to raise their babies, the most fish. And so if a male, uh, they, so like they'll be with the same male on the territory, but if another male comes and takes over the territory, the female will stick around generally. Um, so not for life, but for generally about seven years. Allison. How long do they live for generally? Yeah, up to 30 years. I mean, they're wow. long lived, they are strong and long lived birds. Wow. If they can keep it going, they will keep it going. Yeah. That's longer than a lot of birds. Yeah. I know. Absolutely. I mean, they're big, they're big, they're big and tough. And so um, yeah. they can survive a lot if, if they don't, you know, nothing bad happens. Mm -hmm. And my question also on that, too, you were talking about the mating every seven years, roughly. So, if like the female doesn't find another male per se, they won't stick out any longer with that, with that male. Correct. They just tend to leave and or um, does the new female come along and kind of try to take oh, over? Well, the male will have to go and try to find a new territory. So he just goes to a whole to new territory. Wow. Yeah. He'll, he'll do what he can to try to make it work. Yeah. Like all of us. <laughs> I was just saying, just do what you got to do to make it work. Right? Like all of us. <laughs> Ezra, I see your audio. You're off mute. Do you have a question? Uh, you don't have to. <laughs> I couldn't. Uh, you. I couldn't see you on the screen for a minute, so I didn't know if you were trying to get it. Do you see any loons out in Bar Harbor ever? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> and um, I have. Fam, I family summers in Goldsboro, and we can take the boat right across the bay. Cool. Awesome. And we're, we're seeing rooms. Cool. Um, I'm fine. Calf Island uh -huh. and um, find the pointy pines sometimes. Huh. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Allison, 
Um, how strong is their beak? Like, can they penetrate, like, say, a boat? Or Good like, question. how much, <laughs> how much pound or weight can they put against that? To, like, you know, really... I don't, I don't know the answer to that. I, I don't. I hope no one has studied whether they can penetrate a boat. That would be bad for the boat and the loon, probably. <laughs> but right. I, they could bring, if you have like an inflatable boat, uh, mm-hmm. I'm sure they could, or like a raft oh, or something. Yeah. Sure they could. Um, but I don't know. I've never heard sort of how uh, how strong they are. Like, right, or how much that's, force. That's a really good question. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, my question is about the, the loon count. Yeah. Um, and like, I get that it's, um, it's, it's like an attempt to get a sense of, of what's out there. Right. How do you know yeah. though, that well, there's not like three boaters on one lake that are counting like the same loons? Like, right. Yeah. I, I'm just curious about that. Cause it's very well organized. That's how, <laughs> because we have, uh, we have sort of regional coordinators, um, that, that make sure that all the people who are going out say, you know, cause there are multiple counters on a lake but they'll make sure that there's there can be in different territories and not double counting the things. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's a big, it's, it's a huge effort to make sure that everything is organized and that the infra- information comes in the right way. Um, but uh, yeah, they're, they're just doing their best to make sure that people aren't double counting. It's a big, well, it's a big well, deal. And it's so awesome that, that, right, like that collectively people can come together to, to help, you know, find out that information. It just feels so rare that, right? That we can work together to do something so positive. So that's great. People love loons and people love to do it. I mean, there have been people who've been doing counting, you know, involved in the loon count for, for 30, 40 years. Um, Cause they just, cause it doesn't take much effort. You know, it's a, it's a half an hour out on the water looking around, but, but it's a way to, to really help the science and to support uh, the loons that people love. Allison. How many nests are, would you typically find on like, say, on like how big of a lake would you find yeah. just like one nest? Because I've only seen one family out like on Lake George and it's not very big. Yeah, it depends on a couple of factors. One is how productive the lake is. And so the main, yeah. the main deal is how much fish they can catch. Um, but generally, if you're raising four babies, it's like 100 and over 150, you know, 150 acres or so, which is a pretty good sized pond. They can do it on smaller than that. Um, yeah. and more, loons can fit into smaller than that if they need to, um, but only if they have enough food to survive. And so, um, you know, I, I, my family has a place up on Cabasi Conti Lake in Manchester, and there are a bunch, you know, uh, eight to 10 pairs of loons on that lake because wow. it's, yeah. it's so big. Others, you know, a, a lot of, you know, smaller size lakes have one resident pair and that works for them. And so, um, yeah, about 150 acres generally. Yeah. Well, I think cool. we are running short on time. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to either say something else or ask in one last question or. Well, it was great to see you all. Oh, Thanks for having fun. me in. Oh, this was super informative, Nick. I really appreciated this. And My pleasure. I think, I think everybody else too, did as well. Nice to meet you all. Yeah. Have, a great, you. have a great rest of your day. All right. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. That was cool. That was very cool. Let me um, stop.